The local adjustment tool is useful when only a small area of an image requires correction. This is how it works. You set up the brush, you choose what kind of correction you want to make, and then just paint with it as you would with a normal brush. You can adjust the size and the feather, not just with the sliders, but with the keyboard shortcuts as well. Square brackets are for the size and shift square brackets are for the feather. The flow slider defines how much of the chosen effect is applied and the density determines how transparent the effect is. I'll set both flow and density to 100 for the strongest effect possible, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Now let's see what kind of effects you can apply. The great thing is that you can use one, two or multiple effects all at once. For a quick demonstration, I'll lower the exposure and decrease the saturation at the same time. Now everything I paint on gets darker and less saturated. Every time I click the left mouse button, a new area of adjustment appears. But all the areas still belong to a single adjustment. See this red pin icon? I can click on it and drag it and the areas I painted on will be moved all at once. Even if I change the settings and paint some more, it will still be the same adjustment. Why? Because it's set this way. There are three settings for this tool. New, Add and Erase. When set to New, it adds a new adjustment and then switches to Add. When it's set to Add, it adds more areas to the same adjustment and areas can be moved simultaneously. And there is also the Erase mode when the brush works like an eraser. The whole thing looks a bit awkward and counterintuitive, and that's why a lot of people tend to stay away from this tool. But it's actually quite useful, just wait a bit more and you'll see for yourself. After making an adjustment, you can move any sliders you want, and the changes will affect the adjustment you've just made. You can also remove all the adjustments by clicking on the Clear All button. For example, if you want to make the background in this image lighter than it is, if you wanted to do it in Photoshop, you would have had to select it first, but here it's not necessary. If I check the Auto Mask checkbox and then set the exposure to plus 2 and drag the brush around the background, it will become white, but the rest of the image will remain the same. This is only possible because of the Auto Mask feature and it works only with contrast objects, but works, which is good enough. Try the same without the auto mask and you'll see the difference. If you installed the latest version of Camera Raw, there is a nice bonus the Range Mask additional feature of the auto mask. It can be used to refine the auto mask to your liking. To use it, all you have to do is make a local adjustment first with the auto mask enabled. I'll run the brush over the dress with the settings that lower exposure, so that you could see the effect straight away. Then I'll click on the Range Mask dropout menu, where I can choose between Luminance and Color. The Luminance sliders work just like the Blend If in Photoshop. By moving the sliders, you're basically telling your adjustment to stop blending if it lies over the areas of a particular tonal range. So if I move the leftmost slider to the right, the dress will stop blending immediately because it's dark and it's located in the leftmost part of the histogram. To my opinion, the sliders are a bit awkward and I doubt that you'll be using this luminance control settings much. So let's switch to the color option. It brings the eyedropper tool and you have to click on the particular color and tone which you want the adjustment to be affecting. So if I click on the dress, which is black, the hand will not be affected anymore. You can also hold Shift to add more samples to the image. This is a nice thing to be aware of, so make sure you remember that this function exists, as it's not standing out and it's easy to forget about it.